Okay, let's talk about the different types of Foley catheters. Now, most of my videos are intended for patient education, but this one is more directed towards medical students, urology interns, maybe a urology PGY2 or, or an ER doctor that wants to learn more about the different Foley catheters. So the standard catheters that come in the Foley kits are typically your latex catheters. That's just a regular rubber catheter essentially, and they're typically 16 French. When you hear that French, that's basically talking about the circumference of the catheter measured in millimeters. So a 16 French catheter has an outer circumference of, of 16 millimeters. And for that's your sort of everyday catheter for patients who just need bladder drainage. There's nothing special about it. Uh, the first type of special catheter you'll see are these clear ones that we call silastic catheters or silicone or latex-free. Now, some of the Foley kits actually come with these. Uh, the main reason to use one of these would be if you have a patient with a latex allergy. The other reason we use these sometimes is because they're a little bit more firm than your typical latex catheter, and that can help if you have a, a stricture or something that you're trying to get a catheter through. So uh, often we'll use a 14 French silastic catheter. If we feel that the patient has a, a urethral stricture and maybe it's just slightly narrow, this is much more likely to get past the stricture than a 16 French uh, latex catheter. Obviously, if it's a real narrow stricture, this is, this is not going to work either and you're gonna to have to uh, address that. Um, the other catheter that you'll hear a lot about is the Coudé catheter. It's also a uh, latex, just like your regular latex catheter, but it has this sort of upward curvature to it at the tip, um, and it's a little bit more firm at the tip. So coude means elbow in French, and basically this has sort of this elbow tip. And this is typically used in men with enlarged prostates, that this tip can basically, it's a little bit less likely to buckle, and it sort of makes the angle of the, of the prostate to, to get into the bladder. And uh, we often actually use an 18 French uh, council, or sorry, coude tip catheter, uh, because the issue really isn't the, the size of it not fitting, the issue is that the regular catheter tends to, tends to buckle. So we'll often use a, an 18 French uh, coude catheter for, for men with, uh, with BPH. Uh, the other time you often use a coude catheter is actually in women, where the urethral meatus is somewhat retracted, uh, into, the, into the vagina, uh, particularly in elderly women with vaginal atrophy. You can basically put a, a finger into the vagina and put this catheter slid on top of the finger and it tends to make that angle into the meatus, somewhat of a, of a blind pass. But basically if you feel the catheter advancing and you don't feel it on your finger in the vagina, uh, you sort of know that you're in the urethra and then you'll see urine come out obviously once you're, once you're in the bladder. The other thing to note for for men with, uh, with BPH, with difficult Foley's, obviously there's some technique to it, to pulling on the urethra and also using a lot of lidocaine you'll, or lubricant jelly. You'll hear uh, Eurojet being used a lot. That's that uh, 10 cc um, lidocaine uh, infused lubricant that's often used. Now it's been studied, the lidocaine component does minimal to anything other than placebo, but it just sort of drives home the point of using extra lubrication. So that's sort of in the shape of a syringe and you can push that up the urethra to maximize the lubrication as you're going in with the catheter. And that, uh, that does help. Now I'll make a transition here to talking about hematuria. Uh, this is not necessarily a situation where the Foley is difficult to put in, but in a situation where the patient has a lot of blood and potentially clot in their bladder and you're trying to, to get that out. So the catheter that you often see put in by the ER in this situation is an 18 French three-way hematuria catheter. So when you hear the word three-way, they're basically talking about the end. So you have your, your main port, which is where the urine drains. You have your balloon port that fills the balloon and the bladder. And then this is the third way, this sort of special component that allows you to infuse fluid through here continuously, typically saline. So you can start a patient on CBI or continuous bladder irrigation. Now these, uh, the balloon port typically holds at least 30 cc's, not your usual 10 cc's, so that's important to note so it doesn't fall out. Uh, and this 18 French three-way uh, catheter is, uh, in my opinion, pretty much a piece of trash. Uh, I hate it, uh, should almost never be used because if a patient has any sort of clot burden, uh, this is really not going to get the job done. This cannot get out any sizable clots uh, and this is just something the ER typically does to temporize things. 
so that they can get the urology consult, especially if the urologist is not coming in until, until the next day. The uh, much better catheter to use for, for hematuria are these specific, uh, what we call three-way hematuria catheters. Now they look very similar to the other one, but you'll notice they have the, the coude tip that we talked about, because often these are uh, men with enlarged prostates as a part of the cause of bleeding. Uh, also, you see this sort of metal wrapping around here, makes the catheter more sturdy, less likely to, to get clogged or, or collapsed. And the opening here is much bigger, basically has this kind of mini fish mouth opening at the tip. So this is much more likely to be able to get the, the clots out. And this comes, uh, usually the smallest size is a 20 French, uh, but they make 22 and, and 24. And a 24 French uh, three-way hematuria catheter, uh, has a, this one is a 24. So this has a reasonable chance of getting all of the, all of the clot out if a patient has clot in their bladder. Uh, now, if a patient has serious clot burden, uh, the gold standard, sort of the best catheter to use to get the clot out are these uh, Rouge catheters. Now, uh, Rouge is actually a, a brand name and they make different types of catheters, so it's a bit of a misnomer to call this a Rouge catheter. It's uh, actually called a Simplastic catheter, basically a combination between the word simple and plastic. And this has uh, several advantages uh, over the other hematuria catheters. The main one being this uh, opening on the side. So it's not just the tip that has an opening to get the hematuria out, this whole side has a humongous opening to get clot out. It's about as wide as my finger. Uh, so this catheter can really get out a lot of clot uh, very effectively. Uh, it's also a much more firm uh, plastic material that is less likely to collapse on itself and less likely to get uh, clogged uh, with, the, with clots. Also, the, the balloon port similarly holds at least 30 cc's, but you can fill this up probably to about 100 cc's before you have to worry about it popping. And sometimes we will overfill the balloon uh, on purpose to put some traction on the, on the prostate if we think the bleeding is coming from the prostate. Uh, these catheters are obviously a lot more firm, so you can do some damage with these if you're not in the right place. Uh, so that's why the ER doesn't typically like to, to put these in. But if you're a urology resident, you're probably going to, to learn to get pretty comfortable with these and sort of know if it's going in properly and you're advancing it, or if you're in a false passage or something, uh, then you want to stop and, and not use this catheter until you have a, a clear way uh, into the bladder. And uh, that pretty much sums it up for the, the hematuria catheters. Uh, going back to the, the difficult Foley's, uh, We'll also talk about this uh, council catheter. Uh, they're typically red, but, but sometimes they're, they're clear. The only thing special about a council catheter is at the tip, there's that tiny little opening. And that basically allows you to put the catheter in over a wire. So if you can get a wire that you know is in the bladder, then you can basically put this catheter over the wire and hold the wire on some tension, and that uh, guides the catheter in. Now, the best way to get a, a wire in the bladder is using a cystoscope, and we often use a, a flexible cystoscope at the bedside in the ER on the floor to, to scope the, the wire into the bladder and then advance this catheter uh, over the wire. Uh, and that, that works well. And it's somewhat confusing, you know, let's say there's a, there's a stricture that's only 16 French, and you just try to blindly pass a catheter, it won't really go. But if you take that same catheter and you put it over a wire, when you push, it will uh, generally make its way uh, through the stricture into the bladder. And this can also be used if there's a high bladder neck and you're just not making the angle uh, passing the Foley uh, the usual way. So, so scoping in a wire uh, can definitely uh, be sort of a last resort to being able to get a difficult catheter. Now sometimes some people will try to get a wire in without a cystoscope. Uh, basically blindly passing a wire, so you'll often use one like this, basically a, a straight sensor wire where the tip is hydrophilic, and they'll try to basically just push this up the urethra and try to get it into the bladder. Sometimes they'll also use, uh, in combination, uh, a 5 French open-ended catheter like this, sometimes called a UCAP. Sometimes we would call this a bumblebee catheter because of the, of the color, but basically in combination of passing this one and this one sort of trying to blindly pass a wire into the, into the bladder. 
Now, it's somewhat of a, of a Hail Mary um, to, to do that without a, without a cystoscope, but it, it can work. Uh, the only thing is, if you do get this into the bladder, you don't really know that you're in the bladder because you're just passing this uh, from the outside. Uh, and obviously you don't want to dilate or, or force anything through uh, a passage that you don't know is in the bladder. So one way that you can check if your uh, wire is in the bladder is basically you could advance your five French open-ended catheter over the, over the wire, like so. Okay, so here's my five French open-ended catheter, or my bumblebee, as we used to call it, um, over the wire. And then once this um, is in all the way, you can take out the wire, and you can see if this is in the bladder. It will either drip, or you can just connect a, a syringe like this one to the back of the, of the catheter and aspirate. <coughs> and if you get a syringe, full of urine, then uh, you're pretty much guaranteed that you're in the bladder. Uh, sometimes you can push this in too far and it's sort of coiled and that's not why you're not getting any urine back. So sometimes we'll sort of aspirate as we pull out and then you'll find as you pull it out a bit, then you start to see urine in your, in your syringe. Sometimes you'll have to flush fluid in to be able to, to get it out. But if this is anywhere other than the bladder, if you flush fluid in and then try to aspirate, you might get a cc or less. But if you can fill this full 10 cc syringe with urine on one try, just aspirating like that, you can pretty much guarantee you're in the bladder. <clears throat> so then at that point, you can disconnect your syringe, put your wire back in over the, uh, through the uh, open-ended, take your open-ended catheter out, and then put the, the council catheter uh, over the wire. <clears throat> now the issue is, even if you do uh, get a wire that you know is in the bladder, if there's a stricture that's less than uh, 16 French, your 16 French council catheter is not going to go in, even, even over the wire. In which case, uh, you probably have to do some urethral dilation. So again, 100% sure this is in the bladder before you do any sort of dilation but there's all sorts of, of urethral dilators. The ones we typically use are these uh, Heyman dilators. They come in different sizes, usually starting as low as eight French, and you basically pass these through one at a time to dilate the stricture to be big enough to be able to get your catheter in. Now, if you want to get a, a 16 French council catheter in, you've got to dilate to at least 18 French, maybe 20 French, to be able to, uh, to reliably uh, get this in. Now, for whatever reason, they don't make council catheters that are less than uh, 16 French uh, in size. And so sometimes you have a patient that's really uh, not tolerating the dilation or they're on a heparin drip or something and you really, don't want to, you really don't want to dilate them. You can basically make a uh, council catheter out of any other catheter. So you could take, say, your 14 French silicone because you think this patient has really a 14 French stricture that you may be able to, to get this in over a wire without doing any sort of dilation. You basically have to turn this uh, council catheter into, I'm sorry, this, uh, this silastic catheter into a council catheter. Now why every catheter doesn't have a hole at the tip so you can put a wire through it, I don't know, but, but they don't. So basically what you'll do with this catheter is you'll take uh, a 14 gauge angiocath, okay? and you very carefully uh, pass it through the, the side hole and then out uh, to the tip. One second, out to the tip. Okay, so now I can take my needle out and I still have this plastic part on the back of the angiocaf and then I can take the, the back of the wire and advance it uh, through the, the angiocaf and then like this, then I can remove the angiocath and the wire is going through the tip of my catheter. Now it's coming out through the side port where my angiocath was, but I can pretty easily back the wire in through that side port and then through the uh, catheter. And now I have my uh, 14 French um, silastic catheter that I'm going to advance uh, over a wire. So here I've, I'm advancing it. Once I've got the wire basically 
coming out the back end of the catheter, I'll hold the wire or ask an assistant to hold the wire on tension and then I can advance this uh, catheter uh, over the wire. Uh, this is a little bit, you know, sort of off-label uh, use, but it can, it can get you out of some, some sticky uh, situations uh, in the ER uh, in the middle of the night. Um, only other thing that I'll mention is that you can do this, um, this sort of angiocath trick on any catheter. So let's say you have a patient with a significant uh, clot burden, hematuria, uh, and you can't get in um, one of your hematuria catheters. Well, if you can get a wire into the bladder, you can basically do the same thing. Pop a hole into the tip of your hematuria catheter, in this case the uh, Rouge Symplastic catheter, and advance this catheter over the wire. Now you've got your heavy-duty hematuria catheter safely in place over a wire and you can get the, the clot out. Now the, uh, the last resort, uh, you know, if there's absolutely no way to get anything uh, through the urethra, is a suprapubic tube. Now, and there's a bunch of different ways to, to place a suprapubic tube, and uh, obviously if you've never done this before, you need to be doing it with somebody uh, who, can, who can guide you through it, because uh, you can do a lot of damage with a suprapubic tube. But um, if you're going to do a blind suprapubic tube placement, meaning you don't have a camera in the bladder, and you're basically just popping a suprapubic tube into the lower abdomen, ideally you have a patient who's thin, and a patient who's never had any abdominal surgery and super ideally you have a recent CT scan showing that there's a clear window between the bladder and the skin with no bowel in the way uh, and that sometimes is the case because they often get scanned in the ER by the time they call you and you can say oh yeah this would be really easy to, to safely place a super pubic tube uh, if you are going to do that uh, ideally the bladder is super distended, basically as distended as possible. If you have a half full bladder and you try to percutaneously through the skin pass a, a super pubic tube introducer, the bladder kind of like a water balloon will just sort of move out of the way. So you need a tense, uh, very full bladder uh, in order to do this. And also a little bit of Trendelenburg likely helps to get uh, some of the, the bowel out of the way. Now uh, the standard super pubic tube introducer that we use looks like this. Um, and basically this goes directly uh, into the bladder and then once you're in you take out this inner trocar urine should be gushing uh, through here and that's when you can advance your, your catheter through the suprapubic tube uh, introducer now word to the wise you'll see this catheter does not fit through this introducer and that's something that you want to know before this introducer is in the bladder because the last thing you want is to be looking for a catheter when there's urine uh, gushing through here <coughs> and patient uh, is in pain. You can lose your access to the bladder uh, and you wouldn't be able to do another suprapubic tube after you've already made a hole in it because you're not going to be able to distend it anymore. So um, you can always test and I recommend testing. Basically your suprapubic tube kit comes like this and before you, you put it into the patient take out this inner trocar take the catheter that you're planning to use, say in this case a 14 French, and just confirm with yourself that it goes through easily. Okay, take it out, and then put in uh, your, your introducer, uh, and then go ahead and, and do the procedure. Because these do come in different sizes, and if you're in, in the middle of the night uh, in a rush, uh, and you, you didn't pay attention, you accidentally grabbed the wrong size, you, you want to know that before you, you put this into, into the bladder. Um, <clears throat> so that pretty much uh, covers it for uh, difficult Foley placement. Obviously, a lot of this has to be learned um, on the job, um, but uh, just having sort of an idea of the different uh, terminology and, and why we use certain catheters in certain situations uh, is helpful uh, as you get going.